In this video, we're going to be looking at the relevant anatomy of the sacrum and the coccyx. Let's begin by answering some important questions about these two bones. First of all, how many sacral vertebrae are there? Well, it turns out there's five fused sacral vertebrae that are named S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. You can see these right here. And in a fully grown and mature adult, all five of these sacral segments, S1 through S5, are fused which begs the question, when does each sacral vertebrae fuse with the others? The answer is they begin to fuse in late adolescence and early adulthood and are usually fully fused by the age of 30. We're gonna see the same thing is true of the coccyx in just a minute. So what's interesting about this is actually that the sacral segments when you're born, and even as a kid, are not actually fully fused yet. They don't fuse fully until the age of 30. The next question is, the sacrum coccyx complex exhibits what secondary curvature? Remember at some point after infancy, the spine develops secondary curvatures in each of the main regions. So if we look at this on the left side of the screen, the cervical spine here, or the neck, and then the lumbar spine down here, each have characteristic lordosis, and that is normal. Also the thoracic spine has a normal kyphosis, so that begs the question, what is the curvature of the sacrum and the coccyx? Well, to me, it looks most similar to the thoracic spine. And so we can say that it's gonna be kyphosis, similar to the thoracic spine. And what's nice about the entire spine is it just alternates. So lordosis, kyphosis, lordosis, and then kyphosis. If you're asked about that, if you know the other three segments, well, you know that it just alternates every different segment. So the sacrum and coccyx, collectively have normal kyphosis. And it's also worth mentioning that in males, the sacrum is a little bit more anteriorly tilted, and in females, it's a little bit more inferiorly tilted. Now, inferior to the sacrum, we have the much smaller coccyx. So how many coccygeal vertebrae are there? Well, this one is different than the sacrum in the sense that there is some genetic variability. Generally speaking, there's always five fused sacral segments. But in the coccyx, it can range between three and five fused coccygeal vertebrae. And these are terms CO1, CO2, and CO3. Obviously, we can't use the term C because that's already designated for the cervical spine. So we have to say CO for coccygeal. And again, when does each coccygeal vertebrae fuse with the other segments? Well, they begin to fuse in late adolescence and early adulthood and are usually fully fused by the age of 30. That's exactly what we saw for the five segments of the sacrum. And what you see right here in green is the sacrococcygeal joint. This is obviously a joint between the sacrum and the coccyx, more specifically S5 right here and CO1. We'll go into this joint in a little more detail in a future video, but understand that it's not a diarthrosis. So it's not a synovial joint in most individuals. It's actually a symphysis, so it has very limited movement. Uh, there are no muscles that actually produce this movement. In fact, uh, the only movement it has is very slight passive flexion and extension that has to do with pressure in the abdominal cavity. And that pressure is what builds up when you're undergoing defecating or coughing, sneezing, etc. Okay, and anything that involves the Valsalva maneuver. And now for some more anatomical questions. So number one, what structure sits atop the sacral base? So what is the sacral base? Well, if we look at the anterior view of the sacrum, the sacral base is really just a platform on which the vertebral body of L5 sits. Okay, and again, you can see the sacral base more clearly from an anterior view. And then, what structure articulates with the sacral superior articular facets? So you can see the facets in both views, anterior and posterior. When you look at the anterior view, you're looking at the side of that facet or process that is not articulating with the other bone in the joint. When you're looking at the posterior view, you can see that surface that articulates with the other bone, and that other bone is the inferior articular facet of the L5 vertebra. And so the superior articular facets of S1 that articulate with the inferior articular facets of L5 not shown here form the zygopophyseal joints or facet joints between the lumbar spine and the sacrum. So those are your articular facets and know that those are synovial joints. Now, what structures articulate with the sacral ala? So here's one ala over here. This is the left ala. And here's the right ala. 
And the structures that articulate with those are the ipsilateral ilia of each os coxa. Remember the os coxa is one half of the pelvis. So the pelvis has two ilia. And so again, the right ilium articulates with the right ala of the sacrum and the left ilium articulates with the left ala of the sacrum. What articulates inferiorly with S5 right here? Well, that's gonna be CO1 of the coccyx. That's the first segment of the coccyx. And this joint right here, as we mentioned before, is the sacrococcygeal joint. Again, we'll go into that in more detail in the next video. Now, what structures pass through the sacral canal moving inferiorly? We can't see the sacral canal in an anterior view very well, but we can see it in a posterior view. Here's the opening of the sacral canal on S1. It exists posterior to the base of the sacrum and between the articular facets, that is superior articular facets of S1. So here's its opening and it goes down throughout the sacrum and it's essentially just the vertebral canal of the sacrum and its exit point down here is the sacral hiatus. Now this question is basically asking what structures move into the sacral canal. And it's really just the nerve roots of the cauda equina that we have left, those belonging to S1 and below. So S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, and coccygeal nerve roots. They go into the sacral canal. And what structures pass through the sacral hiatus? Well, those are gonna be only S5 and the coccygeal nerve roots. Now, why is that? Because the other structures that entered the sacral canal, that is the nerve roots S1 through S4, actually exit through their given sacral foramina. So if we look here, we can see these holes on either side in between each sacral level. So right here's the anterior sacral foramen. This exists between S1 and S2, just like this one over here. If we look at the posterior view, we can see the posterior sacral foramen. Now, there are four sets of these sacral foramina. There are foramina between the levels of S1 and S2, between the levels of S2 and S3, between the levels of S3 and S4, and between the levels of S4 and S5. So the S1 spinal nerve components exit from the foramina at this level between S1 and S2. If we were talking about the S4 spinal nerve components, those exit from the sacral foramina at this level right here between S4 and S5. So S2 would be this level, S3 here, S4. So the lowest level spinal nerve that exits from the sacral foramina is the S4 spinal nerve. But we can be even more specific because the spinal nerves that exit through these sacral foramina follow the same basic rules as those that exit from the spinal cord proper higher up. They have a posterior or dorsal ramus, and they have an anterior or ventral ramus. It turns out that the posterior rami exit through the posterior sacral foramina at the appropriate level. The anterior or ventral rami exit through the anterior sacral foramina at the given level. So if we were looking at, let's say, the posterior rami of the S2 spinal nerve, well then they would exit from these two posterior sacral foramina right here because they're posterior rami and this is the S2 exit level. And as we mentioned previously, the S5 and coccygeal nerve roots are gonna exit inferiorly through the sacral hiatus. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about what those do in the next video. Also in the next video, we'll be talking in a lot of detail about the sacrococcygeal joint structure and function. So make sure to join us there. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.